number one nation worship. This is what we call our UTC worship. So can we welcome all of you? praise team today, but they're not ready yet. So please welcome them next week. We'll start the worship right away. We will um, listen to the message right away. Let's look at Daniel chapter 3. So sorry for our inconvenience, but please, uh, we're in a transition. So please uh, understand. be mindful of our situation. Joseph, can you play a song after the message? You have the lyrics. Can you? Can you give it? All right, we'll look at Daniel chapter three. Verse 18 to 36. Can we start verse 17? So please open your Bible. If you don't have, you may use your phone. Uh, we're referring to ESV. Uh, starting 17, uh, I'll start to read. And you may, re uh, you may read after. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O King. So now that they are showing this faith, that our God will deliver me. But what's, and what's, what they are saying after this is this, but if not, even when God does not deliver us from this burning fiery furnace, it's not a problem. I will still worship our God, that I cannot bow down before the golden age. Let's you read 19. Oh. Then the Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. So after they make a resolution holding on to the only covenant, what are they facing now? Are they facing better result, or are they facing worse result? Now the consequence of their faith turns out to be the worst of all. It never happened this way before. But they're hitting this seven times more and more. Can you guys read verse 20? So are they about to go in and act, or are they throwing into it now? Yeah, right? It's ING. Now they're running into and they're throwing, they're thrown into the burning fire. Then these men were bound in their clocks, their tunics, and their hats, and their other garments. And they were thrown into the burning fury furnace. And verse 22. So we're referring to ESV. <laughs> And these three men, Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, fell bound, fell bound into the burning fury furnace. He answered and said, "But I see four men unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and and the appearance of the force." is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fire furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And he said, say traps? Set traps? Okay. Yeah, please help me. Say trap. I'm right. So, say traps. Um, the 
prefects and the governors and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those, those men. The, the hair of their heads was not signed, their clocks were not harmed, and no smell of fire had come upon them. Verse 29, therefore, I make a decree. Who's making a decree now? The king, right? It's not believers that are making a decree, but now unbelievers making the decree on behalf of believers God. Is it really possible? We can see it is possible in the Bible, right? Now the king, unbelievers, making a decree, and I'm on the, verse 29, Therefore I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their house is laid in ruins, for there is no other God who is able to rescue in this way. Amen. You guys remember the title for today's message? But if not, because we are created. Uh, created to move and put our action we, we are created to think what we cannot do and what we are not good at is this we're not good at this we're not good at how to still so um this coming Thursday is my fourth anniversary for my uh, marriage with my wife. Wow. So I actually saved 200 bucks in my, in my Bible. And in the beginning of our first service, I opened my Bible and money was gone. And what will be your instant reaction to that? Now the worship began and now they start to praise. And now I just found that my 200 bucks is not there anymore. So I'm lost. My all plan will be crumbled. And now that I can know, what would you do? You gotta know, we're in a worship situation. What would you do when you're lost? You just found out that you lost 200 bucks for your future. Do we stay still or do we go right away to find our money? So I have this natural instinct to go out to Go, go back to my office or go back to look for my money in my bag. But what I did, stay still, right? Money will somewhere, no matter what. Whether I go find, whether I not go find, it will be right there. But you know what we can do? We can stay still and worship. We compromise so many. At the same time, now our youth kids text to me. Pastor, what are we going to sing after the messages? Two kids texted me. So natural instinct, my reaction towards the text was this. Why not me texting back right away? Don't forget, we're in a worship. But texting back doesn't really take more than 10, 10 seconds, right? But so I was very tempted to text back. But because I want to share this God, this today, I didn't text them back. We can push it back, right? But what we push back all the time is worship. Oh, I gotta drink coffee. So we are missing the time for the worship. Oh, I gotta answer text message. So we are missing God's text towards our life. Do you guys understand? Because you gotta find out your money that you lost, your worship, you're losing worship. So what do you think that Satan desired the most? Satan wants you to lose the blessing of worship. 
people don't really know how to be still. Sagra, Mesa, Abednego. What did they do? Did they use any humanistic way? Or did they find another way to get out of the burning fear of fire? No. They were right there. Even before the golden image, they didn't worship, they were staying still. They didn't even run away from the situation. They were, they were fa literally facing the decree that says, if you don't bow down, you'll be dead. And even before the death, what they did, <coughs> stay still. Why not? What will happen if you stay still? Do you believe it is really you who have who owns this power to control your situation or your life? No, it's not. Stay still. May you stake your life for worship and the for word of God. May you learn how to stay still and pray instead of making all kinds of methods or plan to get to overcome your situation. 99% of your worries is worries that have not come yet. Which means you're not trying to figure out the things that have not come. So you don't even know what will be right there before you. If you start to move, you're making a wrong way. You're gonna see the problem exactly what it is. Then you will come to see the answer. So may you learn to be still. But how come we cannot? It's because of due to the situation. Now, when we look at this age of Babylon, the decree is telling us, you shall fall and worship the golden image. In our words, it is a law. Now the United States do not accept you having Bible at school, do not accept you having Bible study at your company, do not accept you have a prayer to God where you are. They don't accept. You may share whatever you want to with your coworkers, but you don't share your faith. It is the law. So that we are so good at bowing before the law of this age. You guys are so good at keeping, keeping the decree of your school that you're really not good at keeping the law of God. This is why many are always a losing. When the decree is declared, you may say, my God will deliver me from it. So maybe in the beginning you might try a little. But what you face is this. Now you're saying, my God will deliver me from this situation, but if not, I will still worship my God alone. So you might try that in the beginning of your school, in the beginning of your work, in the beginning of your relationship. But now that the consequence is not something you really expected. You see Nebuchadnezzar's face and he is, he is filled with what? Fury. Now you're saying, I'm only holding on to the covenant of the Lord. But now the reaction of the reality of this age is something that I never expected. And now they're telling me this. Burning, what does it say? Burning fury furnace. You're about to lose your job, about to lose your life, about to lose your family, you're about to lose everything because you make a resolution to holding on to the word of God alone. Even though you you just confess, but if not, Lord, even he doesn't deliver me from the, this burning fiery fire furnace, I will still worship. Then we automatically expect he will do something about it, right? But the reality right after the resolution was even scary. Okay, I see you make your resolution. So the world and Satan now telling you, okay, now you're literally going into this, bur this uh, burning fiery furnace. 
people are so scared because of situation and because they're so nervous they're worried they're worried they make a wrong decision because they believe their door has been locked that they can open it now they're saying there's nothing that i can do you know there's nothing that you can do but you know what you do after that the next step is you try to do something on them we don't know how to be still we don't know how to listen to his word we don't know how to pray before god but what we are so good at is using my own power own strengths own energy to overcome my own limitation my own fear my own worries you're about to die if you cannot do anything why not not doing anything? Please come to have this faith and come to this resolution. There's nothing that I can do. I just had um, this Bible study with this girl uh, yesterday, no, not yesterday, two days ago. So she's been receiving a lot of grace from our, our, our church, our messages. And she said, Pastor, I promise you, that I'll be at the church starting this week. So I told her, welcome, why not? Come to our church. And she's like, I'll promise you, promise you. And I'll definitely be there at two o'clock. Even I have a, now I heard all our Murti Anthony and all our youth group will be combined together. So I even have a heart for nurture our youth kids. So I want to be a teacher. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm like, why not? Come, we we'll welcome you. We need more teachers. We need more leaders. And she's like, I'm open to that. I'm going to open my house. I'm going to offer my money and everything, right? So we just shared it. And we were about to finish our worship. And then she was taking me to, uh, she was taking me to my car. And she got a phone call from her friends. Her friends were like, can we have lunch on Sunday 2 o'clock? <laughs> I was right next to her, right? <laughs> right before that phone call, she was promised me, she was promising me, Pastor, no matter what, I'll be there. I stake my life for this. I'll never miss Sunday worship. Before she confessed it, I told her, yo, sometimes people say they can come to church whenever they want to, but he can. It's not that they control themselves to come to church or not. It is Satan blocking them. So even though they have intention to come, when things happen, they can. But she said, no, pastor, I resolute myself, I'm coming. So she got. A, she just got a phone call. I was right next to her. And the friend was making a plan. Two o'clock, you good? And she was like, she should have said, no, I got to go to church. But you know what she said? Thank you so much. I was waiting for that. And she hung up. And then she was looking at me. Pastor, I'm sorry. I can't come to church Sunday at 2 o'clock. My heart was about to telling her, when did you make the promise? She was right next to me, right? You can. You can overcome your worries with your own power. Even though you make a resolution for, for faith, it can be done. If it's done by your own strength. That's why God has given us His method. He gave us His way. People can't come to worship. Why? It's not because that they don't want. They cannot. Why can they be still? It's not that they don't want it. It's because they're so scared. They're so worried. They're so nervous. That they got to do something. Just like how I lost my money, right? After the worship, I went back to my office. I was looking for money. Guess what? Did I find it or not? I don't know. Maybe in, the, in my bag, maybe not. I couldn't find it. <laughs> so I literally lost $200. But, stay still. <laughs> so what do you have to do? So should I go out and work from now on to get $200 for my fourth anniversary of my marriage? No, that's not what God wants. Maybe God wants us to stay home this time. <laughs> not plan anything. Stay still. I know it's scary. I know it's hard. 
I know you're not comforted just being stay still. But why not? When you can do anything, why not allow him to start his work in your life? Now, that, now Sadr, Meshach, and Abednego, they were able to stay still because they have different eyes. This is why they confess. But if not, they saw something that people cannot see. The conviction of the things not seen is what we call faith. Faith is a conviction of things that are not seen to your eyes. But Sadran, Mesag, and Abednego were able to see what people cannot see. They realized it's not the physical fighting that we're battling right now. It is spiritual battle. They saw the consequence of this idol worship and they saw the spiritual force behind all the sin. So they saw something people cannot see. If you start to see who's bringing this segregation, and who's destroying, who's deceiving, you will know what you have to do. You gotta reveal, you gotta open your spiritual eye to see. It is really the battle against the Satan. Forces of the air, the authority of this age, king of this age, god of this age. It's not about me just standing before the golden image, not bowing down. Now if they know it is fighting against the work of the devil. So when they come before you, and it might be through relationship, might be through your work, might be through school, you gotta know you're not fighting against that person. It is a fighting against the work of the devil. And they saw another thing behind it. Because they, they witnessed the work of the devil behind all the sin, now they have no choice except to hold on to one thing they believe they can destroy the work of the devil. And that's what we believe in. That's nothing else. But Christ. I hope Christ wouldn't be an option out of thousand options. Christ must be the only options you can only choose. There's no other options God asks you to choose. Only one method, one option that God has given you and granted to you. It is a Christ. And they believe whoever believes in Christ Jesus, whoever inherit the salvation, there is a ministering spirit that will be with you, protect you, and be with you forever. Hebrew chapter 114, we call it the angels. So what did the Lubuganes saw, saw how many people were in the fear and fire? Were there three or were there four? They knew. They knew it's not it is a spiritual battle that they don't fight with their own strength or their own knowledge. They don't even use their own experience. They have their faith in what is unseen to their eyes, which is only the Christ. Because it's unseen, they believe it's so powerless. But it is the only power of God. It is the power of God that gives salvation to those who believe in His name. So call upon His name. He will allow you to have this salvation in your life. So there is no other answer but one thing. May you see this in your reality. When you stay still, don't just stay still like stupid. Stay still, holding on to covenant, fixing your eyes on Jesus alone. So may you come to understand your identity. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. You may regard us.
as a servant of Christ. You may regard us as a steward of the mysteries of God. And what did Nebuchadnezzar confess to three, three uh, friends of Daniel? He confessed they are the servants of the Most High God. They will soon know what you believe in is God and who is the salvation of even our lives. They will soon know. And then we can wait. Things not come yet. So the faith is what we is the assurance of what we hope for. Conviction of things that are unseen to your eyes. But this is a mystery of the Christ that we can wait in the presence of God. Might be scared, so holding on to Christ. Might be worried, so hold on to Christ. I can't stand anymore. Therefore, God has given you Christ, which is imperishable. We are given this new life through imperishable seed, which is Christ Jesus, which is the Word of God. And He is alone, same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13.8 Can we confess this all together? Let's change our spiritual state. Before changing situation, before changing people around me, Let's change my spiritual state. Let's open Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. Let's open. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. Chapter 12, verse 2. Alright, let's read it one voice. Looking to Jesus, the founder of and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking to Jesus who is the founder and the perfecter of our faith. It's not me making my faith perfect. We have founder and the perfecter of our faith. Looking to Jesus. Just for this verse, I like uh, NIV version. It says, fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus alone. How are we going to do that? Why not? When you stay still, have your eye, eye what is it called? Ear, ear pod? iPod? AirPod? AirPod? Sorry, <laughs> I need to get one. <laughs> AirPod on your ear, turn the world up. I know you can turn thousands of songs on your ear when you stay still, right? But why not turn the world up, God? And listen to it. And pray. May you be careful. You don't pray according to the situation, but you pray according to the Word of God. Many Christians are praying this way. Father, I'm about to be thrown into burning fiery furnace. Can you deliver me? That's what they pray. They don't come to this day. But if not, I still worship. They believe if you were my God, He should deliver me from this burning furnace. And when they're about to be thrown, you know what many Christians do? They repent. Sorry, Lord, I've done something wrong. 
But you got to know this. Whether you repent or not, God has intention to put you in there no matter what. Whether you did something right or wrong, it's not because of your what you've done. It's because from the beginning, God intended to put you into certain situation. So in this situation, why not we stay still, open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts, and listen to His word? Don't you believe God can even put you in problems? He can put you in situation. He can put you in accident. He can put you in whatever. Why not He does what He wants to do within your life? And you may not pray according to your situation. Deliver me from here. No, God has to put you there. Joseph could say, God made me away from slavery. Can you deliver me from slavery? And what happened to Joseph? He was delivered. So where did he go? He went to jail after that. That was a deliverance of God for Joseph. So do we call it God failed? Or do we call it God is fulfilling His covenant? He's fulfilling His covenant. Open your ears. Open your eyes. Open your heart. Listen to clean your ears towards the Word of God. What is He saying towards my reality? If it is my reality, God has designed. What is God telling me today? And holding on to the Word of God. Covenant. Pray with the Word of God. Not with your thoughts. Not because, don't make your worries as your prayer. Make God's Word as prayer. What will happen? I don't know. Let's experience this throughout this week, everyone. For your situation, for your problems, for your relationship, why not we stay still, listen to the Word of God and pray, and we will see and be ready to welcome whatever is about to come to me. May you confess, buddies. He might deliver, yet he might put you back to the burning fire. Maybe Daniel and their friends could be just died in the burning fire. Doesn't matter. If they were dead, they will be in heaven right away. That's where we want to go, right? You guys all want to go to heaven as soon as possible. Is that right? No. <laughs> Word of God, pray, stay still. We will see what God will do. When things happen after that, why not stay still, listen to the word, and pray again? This is a guidance of the Holy Spirit. We are guided by the word, and when we are filled with the word, we can overcome our limitation, our own frame. God is living, and His word is active. And God is with us, so He is the answer to all your situation, to all your problems. God is with us. Amen. Amen. Let's have a time of meditation. Oh, no, I got... Pastor, you got it?